I'm Nicholas Cage. Today we're going to talk about something I have a real love-hate relationship with. Um, these are the wonderful magic black boxes. Uh, this is one of them. There's usually about, well, in most the 49 state or the European models, uh, I think that there's only two of these. Um, however, in the California model, we get three of them. And uh, this one in particular tends to have the most goodies in it, I guess you could say. So we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna crack this open and we're gonna see what makes this tick today. Um, if you're having troubles passing smog or you're just having a drivability problem, it may be a problem within these, uh, one of these boxes. Um, and uh, even though you're, uh, if you have a mechanic, he probably will not want to deal with something like this. This is actually something you can do yourself. Um, it's not as bad as you think. But I realized that on your first glance, before you just randomly take one of these out, uh, it can look a little overwhelming. So just take lots of pictures and whatever method you want. Um, to make sense of it all and be sure that when you do put it back in that uh, that you'll be able to make sure everything gets hooked up to where it needs to be um, if all else fails like I said these hoses are numbered and uh, you should either have a diagram under the hood which will uh, show you the routing of all the hoses um, it's not an exact recreation, but it shows you all of the uh, all of the connections. Uh, just like that, we've got the cover off. What? Um, I'm going to show you how to test all of these solenoids um, and uh, or at least give you a good idea of how the solenoids work and uh, I would like to to show you how to test these other components because um, all three of these boxes that come well the various types of boxes aren't all filled with solenoids um, this one seems to contain the most uh, the other ones only have like one or two and they tend to contain other components. Uh, as much as I would love to show you how to test the other components, I'll be honest and say that I really don't know offhand. Um, that information can be found in the, uh, the factory service manual. Um, and if you do not have one and you would like the info or you need the info, please uh, feel free to ask and uh, it can be provided. Uh, the other components, just to, just to show you, the other boxes have components like this. And uh, also things like this. And I think they're all sort of just variations on the solenoid. Um, some are electrically operated, some are vacuum operated, and uh, essentially they just control airflow. That's all. That's what it's all about. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about solenoids in particular. All these solenoids are are basically electric switches. Um, there's like a spring-loaded valve inside it, and when power is applied. Um, it uses electromagnetism and it will basically pull the valve open so it's just an electrically operated valve when there's when there's power the valve is open when there's no power the valve will close
there seems to be a whole lot of different uh, components and different hoses uh, coming from these black boxes. However, ultimately, there's only two main purposes behind them. Uh, there is fuel delivery and also emissions control. In terms of emissions, the most important thing that they affect is actually your EGR valve and uh, in terms of it opening and closing and uh, causing that exhaust gas recirculation. It will control things like your idle um, at high or low temperatures. It will bump up your idle when you turn on the air conditioning or there is an electrical load. It will open or close valves that will allow hot air to enter into the intake flow uh, when the car is still warming up. So. If you are having problems with these solenoids, um, you will see them manifest themselves, or you will see those problems manifest as problems with drivability. Um, you know, if, you're, if your car stalls out when you turn on the AC, or uh, myself, I've had problems with the EGR valve. Um, and for the last time I got my smog, um, what I ended up having to do was essentially just bypass uh, I came the to whole system. To find out after a whole bunch of heartache that the problem was something as simple as one of these. And uh, so. It's uh, my own private mission to spare others from the same and, uh, trouble. I will show you how to test one of these. I will so show you a way of sort of testing them while everything is still hooked up. Um, all you're going to need is 9 volt battery. Simple enough. And either some wires or some wire leads. Most of these solenoids only have a single wire coming off of them, and that is the power, power wire because the body of the solenoid itself becomes the ground, and uh, it's usually grounded to the metal casing that, that it's bolted into. So we're going to test this one first, and we're going to test it off the chassis. Uh, I've got the wiring hooked up. I've got my yellow lead hooked on to the negative and my red on the positive. And uh, you'll see I've got the negative lead hooked up to the, to the chassis of the, the solenoid itself. And we're simply going to apply power to the positive lead coming off of the solenoid. Um, you want to make sure your connections are nice and clean. Um, I've done this before and it uh, seemed like a bad solenoid, but it turned out to be just a bad connection on my part. So if it fails the testing, keep trying. Make sure you've got a good connection uh, before you just assume that the solenoid is bad. Uh, what I will do now, though, is I'm going to apply power, and you should hopefully be able to hear the solenoid. So... You can hear that clicking of the solenoid activating every time there's power being fed to it. So we know that the solenoid is good. However, there is one other test that you can do on it just to be 100% uh, sure. And uh, to be honest, I'm not even sure it's necessary. I, I think it's probably safe to assume that if the solenoid is activating when power is fed to it then uh, then it's okay however if you really want to get fussy you may still want to check to make sure that it is airtight you may also want to make sure that it is uh, 
allowing airflow or preventing airflow as is necessary. Um, it may be, you may be able to argue the fact that just because the solenoid is activating doesn't mean that there isn't something gummed up inside. However, I think it's a fair bet that uh, if you can hear it clicking, then that means everything's okay. If you have a vacuum pump, you can pull a vacuum on it and then try activating it and uh, seeing if it will hold vacuum or release as is uh, appropriate. Uh, if you don't have a vacuum pump, they're about 30 bucks at just about any hardware store. But what's even cheaper is some plastic tubing and a glass of water. So uh, if you take a little plastic tubing and hook it up and then hook the other end up, well, hook up another length of tubing to... Uh, to the appropriate spot you can simply run that in through the water and uh, and blow try and blow through it basically while you're applying power to the solenoid and uh, hopefully you should only get bubbles when uh, when the solenoid is is being activated Most of them have three of these pieces here. Generally speaking, this top one is actually just a spot to hold one of these. And they actually fit on top here as so. And uh, these filters are just to prevent things from getting inside. Well, most of the newer models like the 82s, the 83s, they kind of improved these and uh, instead of having just a bare a bare cap um, see this brown stuff is cloth instead of just having that they actually have a black cover and uh, it takes in the air from the bottom I'm going to show you how to test that uh, the solenoid while it's still hooked up and uh, what we're going to do this time, instead of having it grounded and then applying the uh, positive to activate the solenoid, we do it in reverse. Um, you'll, I will use this one as an example. What you need to do first is uh, you're going to find the positive wire coming off the solenoid. And uh, this one is a yellow and black wire. And we're simply going to trace it back to the harness. So we'll start by hooking it up and uh, that one actually hooks up there. So we'll hook that up first and uh, we've got our positive connection. And what we are going to do now is we're going to use our ground side of the circuit to activate the solenoid. And like most of these solenoids, it's grounded right off the body. So what we're going to do is we're just going to activate it by tapping the ground wire. Now the thing is, this same technique will work on all of these solenoids. Keep that in mind. Uh, you may have a couple false false alarms but it may just be due to a bad connection uh, not necessarily a bad solenoid so keep trying and uh, double triple quadruple check everything before you give up on it These old Hondas, I love them, but I hate them sometimes. <laughs> uh, especially living in California, where you want everything to work perfectly. Um, 
but unfortunately you can't just pay somebody to, to take care of it for you because they either don't want know what they're doing or they don't want to work on it. Um, it seems to be too much of a hassle. So you got to take matters into your own hands and uh, you know what you save money and you keep your baby on the road and, th and that's really what counts. I'm Nicholas Cage.